So seven years ago, I was a PhD student working on a, a better system for taking and managing notes and ideas. And here's one of the videos that um, I created about my workflow. So I had a system where I could easily, um, I kept all of my PDFs in uh, Bibdesk, which is a bibliography manager. I had some scripts to automatically import metadata from Google Scholar. And then I would use uh, Skim to, to read these papers and uh, highlight and take notes. And I would have some other scripts that automatically extracted all of these notes and highlights uh, into text with um, page references. So this page here was automatically generated. Um, you see here it has a nice formatted um, citation that comes from Bibdesk and it has um, uh, these uh, automatically extracted selections with links back to the pages and actually if I clicked on this page number uh, it would automatically open the PDF viewer through some Apple script magic um, and then I would um, use some JavaScript to create two windows next to each other um, one where I could see these highlights and one where I could take some high-level notes um, that was kind of me condensing the content of that um, paper and so I'd end up with these really nice pages that had a beautiful citation, you know, because of these plugins, I had a table of contents, um, I had the notes that I've taken and um, the, the raw notes below. Um, and I could even see which of the which notes I'd been writing recently. Um, I used um, the Bibdesk key. So here is a Kuros 2010 developing as kind of the, the binding glue. So the PDFs were renamed to this, um, then, then all the all the files in the the, the wiki and so on. But then I had another um, plugin that would take any link um, formatted in a special way um, and actually create this um, this nice citation view instead of just showing the the raw Bibdesk site key. Uh, so my challenge, so this all worked very well. But my challenge was that these. The ideas were still stuck in these individual pages and um, I came up with this idea of trying to use um, something called task paper to just take some quick um, notes from each paper and, and here you see again the site key um, and then I have an indentation so of course we know that all of these points they belong in a way to um, this site key and we also know that these ideas here kind of belong to the learning model under this site key so there's a hierarchy here um, and I thought, well, I can, uh, what I want to really do now is to um, grab the, I, the ideas that are important because when I'm writing my paper, I'm not writing my paper, um, you know, discussing one article at a time, but I might be talking about pedagogy and I need to know what five of these papers said about pedagogy. And so um, because task paper has a nice kind of um, automated, um, you can easily see which tags you've already generated. So just added a bunch of tags um, and then I wrote some tiny bit of Ruby to extract these tags taking into account um, the hierarchy. So here for example you see that under the learning tag uh, even though I just tagged learning model it brings with it the site key because I need to know which paper it comes from and then it brings with it all of the subsequent ideas under learning model and um, I could just use this as a, as a as a single document, but I could also import it into um, Scrivener, which was this um, writing tool that I used, where again, you have this two pane view, and here you have, for empirical, you have all of the extracts um, that are about empirical studies, and then here I could actually write my text using Markdown, using the same site keys, and then when I export it in the end, this text back to the wiki, because of the plugin, um, not only do I get these beautiful citations here, um, but of course, these links all link back to um, the original notes. So I was uh, super happy and excited about this kind of a workflow, but it was also extremely brittle because it relied on four or five different tools that I tied together using Apple Script and Bash and Ruby and uh, keyboard uh, ma maestro and all kinds of stuff um, and it was also using these tools in ways that they were not 
designed for. So it wasn't always the smoothest thing. Um, and in fact, um, I can't really recreate the system now. I have all the underlying data that was stored as text files, but um, it would take me a long time on my new laptop to get all of this working again, which is a shame. And I've been looking for something similar that was a bit more smooth, um, where I could import all of my old data and, and keep working in this because it was an incredibly productive workflow. Uh, so I have just started experimenting with um, Rome, Rome uh, from Rome Research. And um, this actually seems to kind of follow a lot of the different ideas that um, I had. And I'm pretty excited about this. This is just from spending a day looking at it. But what I basically did was I took the text file that, um, that I still have on my hard drive from that um, literature review uh, that I took. And I just um, did a little bit of a search and replace to convert the links to markdown links. And I imported it uh, into Rome. And you see it's just directly picked up on the indentation. So this is exactly the same file as you see um, here, you can see. Um, you just have the site key, which is a link. You have the um, tags here that I just changed from a from a, a at to a hash and it just worked. And um, because of the way Rome works, it actually does all of the cool stuff that I did in my, in my script. So it understands that um, all of this stuff belongs to this tag and um, and so on. And so what I can do is I can click on any of these hashtags, like detecting learning, and you see here that it's picked up the two sections. Um, so evaluate learning, how can we detect learning? And what's really important to me is that it keeps this, um, the higher level, uh, header, which is the site key. And so I can very quickly go and see, okay, these are the two things I know about detecting learning here. If I wanted to, I could start writing things um, uh, directly on the tag. We can try another one. Um, so we can go and look at, for example, uh, meta learning. And here, you know, we see six different, six, seven different papers that all mention um, this thing and we can see right away what they're saying about it. Um, so that's, uh, we can go directly to the section just by clicking on it here. And we can actually expand it in line and so we can see uh, a little bit what, uh, what was going on there. We can also open this on the, um, in the sidebar. So if I wanted to create a new article, I'm going to write an article about meta learning. And of course, I want access to my notes. So I'm going to open that um, in the sidebar here. And we see that we have six re references. And so now I can say um, the role of meta discussions was mentioned in Cornelli. And here, because of the, these are links, I can just do like this. Now, it would have been cool to have a, a plugin that actually formatted this nicely, but still, this is pretty amazing. Um, now, in my old system, I had also extensive notes about all of these papers, and um, I actually kept those in three different files, and I used some different plugins to combine them. So I had like the raw notes, the higher level notes, the, the bibliography, and, um, I've just uh, imported one of these manually. So if I go click to Cornelli 2012 detecting, um, we see here I just quickly uh, inserted the reference. These are the key ideas that I wrote manually. Um, and then here are my, my kind of raw abstract, um, my raw um, text from that paper that I copied out. Um, so I want to think a little bit more about how to format this and that it shouldn't be very difficult to automatically import all of these papers. And then of course, anytime I reference Cornelli 2012. Um, so for example, if I go back to my meta learning page and if I reference um, Cornelli 2012, uh, I don't remember which one it was. 
then um, I can also go directly here. And of course, now if I go to the bottom, I see here that this article has been referenced both in the literature review and in the article about meta learning. So um, we also see some unlinked references. So that's uh, yeah. So these are just uh, this is just metadata that I, I need to to skim out. Um, this is from the little hack I had to automatically op open the PDF. But to me, this is this is really really exciting. Um, and it's very promising. Um, I'll mention one other quick trick that I came up with. One of the things I really liked when um, reading papers was being able to quickly capture uh, graphs and images and stuff like that. And um, through a little bit of keyboard maestro hackery that I just posted on Twitter, I was able to um, duplicate that. So let's say I'm uh, reading something here and I come across uh, something really interesting. So I just want to capture this uh, table here and now here I should copy it to get the text but in case this uh, was a graph um, I can go back here and say I want to insert this here I just hit a single key and um, it just inserts that image so basically it just takes the last screenshot I had and puts it uh, pastes it in and Rome does the rest but this is uh, these kind of things for me makes makes all the difference um, so I will uh, definitely be looking more into how to uh, work with um, work with Rome. I have some questions about the best way of kind of capturing information when I'm uh, reading PDFs, uh, annotating. Uh, maybe there's some kind of integration with Hypothesis uh, where you can annotate text on, on pages and import it to Rome. That would make a lot of sense. Uh, I'm also a bit curious about the best strategy for keeping bibliographic references and stuff like that, but um, already this is uh, pretty mind-blowing, so I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what else I can do.